Hey folks, my name is Kevin and it's time for a little bit more knife nerdery and today we are going to be taking a look at a prototype of a new knife that just dropped on pre-order uh, at Urban ETC Supply Company and they recently sent me the blue denim micarta version of that F5.5 that they did and that was a knife that was in stock and something that they had already made and it was a model that you know they is pretty darn tried and true. This is an actual full-on prototype of a knife that is in pre-order and isn't going to be shipping until this fall. So that's a first for my channel. That's really cool. And I just want to say a huge thanks to Urban EC Supply for, you know, trusting me with something like this. There's there's very few of these in the world is one way of looking at it. Anyway, um, let's use a different Urban EDC Supply. Uh, this is the uh, Workerman Seigai Ha uh, Pena Knives X Series Apache. Wow, mouthful. But this is another thing that, that only exists in the world because of Urban EC Supply. So again, I say many times that the reason why I like them is because they do cool things, like make things like this exist, and things like this. Uh, we'll also have this out for another comparison reason in a moment. So but anyway, let's take a look at what we got going on in here. Okay, so this is <laughs> not the final packaging, I'm assuming. They tend to include these cute little cards that have, you know, well-lit photos and something about being a supporter of the community. Great. Um, let's look at what's inside here. Oh, it's a tiny one. One of the reasons why they reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check this out is because they know that I like smaller knives. And I do. I love smaller knives. I love... Um, the practicality of them. And, oh, 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 okay, there we go, right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. So now you can kind of get a sense of why maybe I had that out. Look at this. I also have this from Urban EDC Supply. I like their wave patterns, and this is obviously a different style of wave pattern. But oh my gosh, look at that. So what this is, is the Monaco. This is a design by um, Jens Anso. And, and a lot of people know him for his very long career in his, as just a custom knife maker and designer. He's designed a lot of cool things that have worked with other production companies as well. And he's also one half of Giant Mouse. Uh, he and Jesper Voxnes work together and they both have similar kind of aesthetics and liking small stout utility things. They, they do other stuff as well, but uh, this is very much in that kind of stout, small space. Oh my gosh, this is definitely a wonderful little nugget. Okay, let's talk more about this. What's going on here? I haven't even opened this up yet because one of the things I'm really curious about is this small flipper tab, but this is going to be an interesting blade shape too. But while we still have it closed, let's just look at like, this is a perfect little pill shape in that direction. Like it's perfectly long and straight. And this is going along that in the same way. And this is sticking out about the same way. And this is a very like symmetric, aesthetically pleasing knife. And you can see that we've got this flipper tab that is nested and fully reversible. So you can have this in either way and you've got that same gorgeous, I don't know, is this milling? They call it deeply engraved. So it's possible this is uh, like deep laser engraving. I, I don't actually know. I, like, I don't know how this was done. If however it's done, it is, it is very, very crisp and nice. and has just a very pleasant feel. I know that Anso said in, um, one of his motivations for this in terms of feel is that it would feel kind of like a worry stone. And right off the bat, before I even open it up, this, I 1000% see that kind of use case for this. This just fits in your hand as a little kind of nugget. And all of these corners, ooh, yeah, that feels nice. Ooh, yeah, running your finger over that, that feels so dang nice. Okay, let's actually open this up finally. You can see we have a little landing pad. How is this going to work? You can see there's jimping just on this corner, and this is like a flat little tab. So it's going to rely on my traction here. That worked effortlessly. Wow, that worked really well. Let me try that again before we take a look at that blade. Yeah, that is super easy to do. Okay. 
Now, once we have it out, we see that that symmetry is really still fully playing in here. Um, we've got a, a faux dagger blade on this. That means it's only sharpened on one side, but that we have this symmetric grind. So there's another version of this that I think is really, actually there's two other versions of this. Um, there, there's, but there's another version in Thai that I think is really cool. One of the things I like about that version is that it has a stone washed blade. I love, love, love stone washed blades, but this is such a, like a gorgeous knife that especially on this non anodized bright titanium version, I think this double satin grind looks really, really nice on it. And the version that has the stone wash finish, actually, it kind of makes sense aesthetically because um, that version has a kind of weathered dual anodization look. It's got a base anno that's kind of this, um, I don't know what you'd call it, bronzy color, but then on top is a, is a, a cobalty blue. And so that version with that kind of weathering where you can see the, the bronzing underneath lends to that more kind of weathered look you get from a stone wash and on this really really bright one i think it makes perfect sense for you to have this satin there's also a version in actual bronze handle and that one has an acid wash a blade that has i honestly i i expect i saw um a friend got one in and honestly i think it's going to be very similar to this acid watch which is like an acid stone wash that i think looks not possible yeah, post-apocalyptic and so i think it looks really good so i think honestly stylistically all three versions that they're doing are really cohesive and well blended and i'm glad they did a satin on this um this is i i feel pretty sure this is a riot build so this is one of those things where um I was told they can't really confirm and deny it, then they won't can't really say because of NDAs who is the OEM on this. But I really think this is a Riot build. And once now that I have it in hand, I feel very confident of that. I can't promise you anything. But just let's look at something else. Like this is the uh the Riot made X series Pena. This is a Crane's Cutlery exclusive in that. Fat carbon. They do some really cool fat carbons there. But just like look at these backs together. Like the finishing on this tie and this like beautiful little chamfer that will glow right there. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. And then here, let's open that up again. I love the way that clicks. Let's look at that, like this chamfer here on the lock bar. Yeah, I feel pretty confident that this is a Riot build. And at minimum, if the even if this weren't I, from from the look and of it and everything, this feels like Riot quality. The, the finishing on this is just spot on. So I would say I'd be willing to wager money that this is a Riot build, but even if I'm wrong, it sure as heck at least feels like it. Another thing that's making me feel that, so if you look over here at this F5.5, um, the construction way that this is done is with a full tie liner that's nested very, very tightly into these tie scales. And you can see that's the exact same thing we have going on over here. There is a full tie liner going on, even though this is a tie scale. And what that means is that um, the bronze version almost assuredly has a full tie liner as well and isn't just a solid slab of bronze. Another reason for doing that is going to be that this on this side is going to be a how they're doing the liner lock. And that's the exact same thing going on over here where you can see we've got a full tie version slab in there, a scale, uh, liner in there, and that uh, is part of it is bent out as the leaf spring for the liner lock. And this is also a liner dot locked on that exact same way. And I'm really, really glad that they went that route rather than having it as a frame lock like this, because um, while it's not a big deal, and some people will always love frame locks, uh, I think that this line here of the lock bar and having the lock bar relief and everything like that just breaks up the patterning in a way that just kind of detracts from it a little bit. And given how incredibly beautiful this is, and the fact that this is fully reversible, means that I'm really glad there's not some kind of lock bar thing there and part of it bent down in. So this is a case where I think it being a liner lock is a really, really good choice for the kind of patterning we have. How does lock bar axis work? So there's this nice chamfer right here. Um, and so I find with my hands that this is easy to do. 
but this is a relatively narrow space. And so since I know people with bigger hands, yeah, those looks about identical in terms of amount of space. I know people with bigger hands have complained about some of these like Apaches from Apania and whatnot, that there's, it's kind of hard to get in. Uh, hard, maybe not the right word. There is a good chamfer here, but there's no recession on the side. And that means that you have to kind of do the thing where you push your finger in in order to get to the side. I have medium sized hands and that's slightly smaller than the average for a man. So I think that for me, there's, I've never had any kind of problem, but I've definitely heard people say that. And I imagine people with bigger hands would ha ha probably find a similar thing there, but I don't think that it is um, going to be problematic. The other thing is that this is just such a small knife that I don't know if people with XL sized hands are really going to be um, necessarily in the market for this period. But one of the things that, that like Jesper Voxen is one of the things that Jens Anso is really good at is ergonomics. And so let's finally start see how this feels in hand in terms of way you exactly use it. So in my medium sized hands, this is a three finger grip under the normal circumstances with me behind that. Pretty much full on full finger grip. And oh, that's, this is one of the things I was most interested is how this would feel. I'm not normally a fan of dagger ground blades, just kind of aesthetically, it's not really my thing, but I think aesthetically on this knife with the symmetry, wow, very nice choice. Um, but one of the reasons why I don't love them typically is because you, um, you're you putting your finger, if you're using a utility cut, you're putting your finger on a swedge. And so what I'm pleased to see is that this actually isn't ground as aggressively on the top as I had thought. I, I you know, I, I'm not going to take calipers out to it in this video, but my my guess when I was just looking at the picture, what my my question was was going to be whether or not they ground this side as aggressively as they ground this side. And my gut says that probably not. So even though this doesn't have an edge, my thinking is that it's probably not quite the same thin behind the edge on this side as it is on this. I could be wrong about that. I'll let you guys know. But what the result is is there is actually a reasonably thick space here. Now it's still definitely thin, but this is something that, I mean, I even talked with Matt over at Urban EDC Supply that I I wasn't 100% sure if this is a knife that I would like, because especially for small knives, um, you want to be able to put your finger on them comfortably in order to be able to work in here, because you just don't have a whole lot of space. And so I was nervous about the dagger grind, um, making this maybe not great in the utility cut. But you can see like it, it is a small space you're pushing on, but this isn't, this isn't sharp. This isn't, um, uh, what am I looking for? There's, there's knives that are even worse than that in terms of, let me think. So this is another small knife that I really love for box opening. This is the Best Heck Tulip. And you can see that this also has a swedge on top and it's a very small knife. You can see that it's um, even smaller and in terms of sharpened blade and everything is even smaller. Uh, and this is one that I love to use in a pinch grip, even though I'm putting it on this relatively narrow space. And though it starts bigger, I'm pushing with my finger up here where it's thinner. And if you look at that compared to this, it's actually not very different. In fact, it's pretty much the same. And because this one stays thicker, this one is actually bigger at the end. And so this is actually more comfortable for me to push and put a little bit of weight into than this one. Yeah, that's a little bit less comfortable. Of course, we have very different blade shapes. And so this very straight edge with a sharp piercing point is going to be better at puncturing into a thing and cutting down. This is something that I, I um, I do wonder about with this, with this much belly at the end, I don't know how easily you're going to be able to get kind of a, a working tip on that. But that's a thing about um, wide bevel, uh, double ground, or what's the called, dagger ground blades to begin with. If they're, if they come very, very sharp and come to a more acute point, then they're designed for piercing. But this kind of one that, that is a really kind of gradual slope down is a little bit more squat and probably isn't going to be meant for piercing quite as much. This edge here, I suspect it actually wouldn't be hard at all to kind of cut with that edge. Huh. Yeah, I think that'll probably work now that I'm trying to like... Yeah, I think it actually wouldn't be hard at all to cut with that edge and use this as a box opening knife. This is probably for most people going to be a small fifth pocket box opening knife. This is a pretty small blade. I think, I want to say it is 
I think they said 1.75 inches. Oh, by the way, it is M390, though I don't see that marked anywhere. It is M390. Um, and so for most people, this is probably going to be like a fifth pocket small task utility knife. And I'm pleased to find that this actually is comfortable enough that I think you could do it for that, use it for that purpose really quite easily. I'm going to say this is never going to be as good of a box opening knife as something like the Spyderco McB. This one with its ergonomics in this form, I think this just really hugs your hand with this like curved back right here. And then in this form, man, like this is the perfect box opener with this little low down tip and it's place for you to rest your finger. And this is never going to be as good as this. This is very purpose built. But one of the side effects of that is that people find this weird looking. Like a lot of people find this to be at first an odd looking knife. And it kind of is. Whereas this is just gorgeous. So while I, I think it's not going to be as utility focused, I think it was never meant to be as utility focused. This um, is meant to be a knife that you feel kind of like excited and proud to pull out and maybe show off to people because of just how stinking pretty it is. And given that it's small, this is the kind of thing that you could absolutely pull out in a, you know, a lunchroom or in an office space or around family and something. And people are going to think this looks impressive and beautiful and almost kind of cute because of the size and not scary at all. So I think I think this is very clearly one of those, um, it's not that it's form over function, it's that form is just at utmost importance as well. But I do think that this being just a very neutral grip means that this is going to work very practically for people. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, I think, I think this is going to be the last thing I want to talk about, is just the weight of this. So the this is like I said, like a 1.75 inch blade, and this when when closed, I think is 2.75 inches long, and so this is a very small knife, but it weighs, I believe they said, uh, 2.4 ounces, and that's pretty close to what this weighs. I think this is 2.5. No, 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 sorry, this, this is 2.5 because it has the bolster lock and has the very, very light carbon fiber. This is a little bit over three. I think this is 3.1. And so where I'm going with that is that this feels heavy for its size. And I believe that's very, very intentional. At 2.4 ounces for 1.75 inch blade, you're definitely not trying to be featherweight. And the, given that this, he said that he expects this to feel kind of like a talisman, feel kind of like a worry stone, and the fact that it does just fit so nicely in your hand, I I think the weight here is actually kind of perfect. I think I think it would be disappointing if this felt hollow in any way. And the fact that this feels so just kind of plunk into your hand in that delightful way, I think makes this feel all the more kind of precise and... Um, valuable like it just gives you that 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 weight and heft that 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 gives the one thing i'll say though is that if you bump up to the bronze version that adds an extra 0.8 ounces it's 3.2 ounces and when you get to 3.2 ounces on a 1.75 inch blade that starts to feel he heavy <laughs> like this feel you feel the weight but it feels kind of soothing. I don't know if that would feel bad to me, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if you're the type of person that's going to buy a distressed bronze and um, full-scale knife, that you probably are the type of person that wants weight. I have a lot of friends that that love when when something has bronze or brass scales and, and copper scales, and they want that kind of extra oomph in their hand. And there's an entire community around finding um, just like very, very heavy, small objects that people kind of carry around in their pockets. And so maybe that will be right up some folks alley in terms of that um, tactile feel. I personally am not that type of person, but I'm also not the type of person that likes uh, bronze and brass and metals that m make my my hands smell at all. And so to me, this would be this, or maybe honestly, the blue one looks really, really dang cool, but this would probably be the version that I would pick up. Um, I don't know if I would pick this up. 
I was hesitant before because I didn't think I would like this blade shape for utility cuts, but having it in hand, I honestly like this a lot more than I was anticipating. It still is not a very, a super duper me styling, but I think the things, if I, if I don't get one of these, I think the, the thing that would be keeping me from doing that would be purely aesthetic and it just not being an, a super duper me knife. As far as how it actually fits and feels and how um, the quality in person, this, I'm so confident this is Riot. This feels so much like Riot build quality that, yeah, this is every bit right up my alley in that regard. As far as pricing goes, the pre order on this, I think, is hitting um, 200. And I think it's going to be something like 230, I want to say, when they eventually come in. Um, and so if you get it on the pre order, you'll get whatever that is discount wise, that's a meaningful discount. Um, I, what is that? 15? I don't know, whatever. Anyway, um, how does that feel in terms of value proposition? Well, you know, there are markedly, markedly cheaper knives if you want a small knife. Like if you just want a small practical knife, the whatever this is, 50 something bucks, 60 bucks, I don't remember. This baby banner is the single best bargain for your buck, small, practical utility knife of all time. Like this thing is fantastic. And so if you're looking for a small knife on a budget, go for something like this. If you want something that's a little bit more kind of stylized and jabby, <laughs> go for something like this. If you want something that is very, very purpose-built, but can still be customized to look cool. In fact, Urban EDC Supply has some Segaiha engraved versions of this in the past, then go for something like this. But if what you're looking for is something that is beautiful, just genuinely, truly kind of jaw-dropping beautiful, then you're not going to find that in some in in this budget space. And once you get up into the the, the higher end space, you're going to pay if you want fancy fancy engraving. So to get something that's this cleanly put together, this well constructed, and this gorgeous of a design, yeah, I think that's that's what these things cost. So um, I'm not I don't balk at all at that pricing. I I don't think I can either say that that's a good value because what does that even mean? When you get into art kind of knives like this, what does it mean to be a good value? If you want value, go for the baby banter. But I don't think that that pricing is weird at all in terms of this materials and everything like that. All tie hardware and everything like that. Oh man, I haven't focused on this quite as much, but looks just how nice it is to have this clip through done the way it is. It's it's so perfectly deep carry. So this will absolutely disappear into your little fifth pocket. Anyway, I have spent so long talking about this. This is practically a small details review, but I haven't used it at all. And I don't really know if I'm permitted to. I'm, I don't know, because <laughs> uh, this is a prototype. So I, if I'm allowed to use this at all, then I'm required to take very, 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 very good care of it. Uh, and I would do that anyway, but yeah. I think I will probably try to end it here. I will, um, I don't know. I don't know how much of a follow-up I will do just because I have gone into a lot of detail here. I, I think this is one of those things where you can even see like the satin, I don't know if my, my phone will focus on it. There's like a beautiful satin, hand satiny kind of finish on this edge. Yeah, I don't know. This knife is gorgeous in every sense of the word. And if you want a small kind of worry stone talisman gorgeous knife, I can't get over how well that works. It's such a small one, but you just you just kind of pull back and it works perfectly. Yeah, I think this is this is great. Yeah. So yeah, this is my full small details review in almost in a sense. I don't know which how I'll label that, but I hope you guys like this. And please do let me know if you get in on these. Oh, I should end on that. And that's kind of a cheesy way to end. But if you do get in on one of these, by all means, please, if you if you feel like it go ahead and use my my referral link below. Um, that helps me out and helps out my channel because I'll get a commission off of the sale. Uh, you don't have to buy this either. Like that referral link will get me a commission on anything. You also really don't have to use my referral. There's other people that have a referral. And if you want to support someone else, go ahead, please. I do encourage you to use someone's affiliate link because it doesn't cost you anything. And it's just nice to be able to give free money to um, some a channel that you support. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, I'll just end on that. Thanks guys for watching and appreciate it. And 
And yeah, this thing is really freaking cool. Thank you again to Urban EC Supply for sending this my way. That is, I really, I really do appreciate it. And you're right, small knives are right up my alley. So thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Hey, so it's time for a quick follow-up before I send this off to another reviewer. I've had this for just over a week now. And this isn't just a loner, but a prototype loner. So I obviously wasn't going to do any real meaningful cutting with it. But I did run this edge through some basic paper just to see what the edge state was like. And it was every bit as crisp and sharp as you'd expect from my brand new knife, especially one OEM to buy Riyadh. Although again, can't quite confirm that. What we can tell about the cutting, what the, how the cutting will perform just from a geometry perspective though, is that it's going to be okay. This is thin blade stock, but not ridiculously bla thin blade stock. It's 120 thousandths or 0.12 inches. It does thin out this entire way, but it's a really quite short grind. However, they did it aggressive enough that it actually gets quite thin behind the edge. It is currently about just under 14 thousandths behind the edge, and that's, that's a very thin behind the edge reading but that is in part because this is an incredibly short bevel. And so what that's saying to me, even though I haven't, I don't have a really good way to read this, uh, measure that, is that the, the edge angle itself is probably reasonably high, at least over 20 degrees, maybe 25, rather than being something more aggressive like 15 to 17. So if you were to make this a sharper edge, something that's, I mean, not sharper, but a more aggressive edge that's going to enter materials more easily, something in that 15 to 17 degree angle range, you will be making this bevel larger. You'll be pushing that back further. And so you're going to be coming up higher on this and getting a thicker behind the edge reading. But if this is 14 and a half or just under 14, I mean, now you're probably going to still end up under 20 thousandths behind the edge. And that's, that's pretty darn good. And that's reflective of the fact that this is, of course, a much more aggressive grind on this side than it is on that side, despite the fact it looks symmetric, because this is 40 thousandths behind the edge on the edge out here, and it maintains that basically the entire way. And that's why it's so comfortable to use. Now, comfortable is all relative. This is a thin thing you're play pricing it on, but 40 thousandths isn't that bad. And so I actually found every single time I held this in a grip and tried to emulate what it would be like to actually use it to cut, put it the same amount of pressure and everything like that, it feels really quite nice in hand. This is just not going to be an ultimate slicer. And to compare it to something like this is another um, Riot OEM knife. This is the Pena X Series Zulu. It's got the same uh, 120 thousandths blade stock. And it's also got a short grind. Now it's a taller grind, but these are both the kind of thing where, yeah, they're just not designed to be super duper slicey knives if you're passing through thick material kind of thing. But are you ever going to really use it for that? This is such a small, pretty knife. It is a three finger grip kind of knife. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you would buy this knife expecting it to be your cardboard glide through cutting demon. So for regular EDC tasks, especially stuff around like an office space or at your home, uh, box opening, letter opening, it's going to work perfectly fine. Um, as far as how this kind of action is, so I, I did. I find that almost every manufacturer ships their knives with just a little bit too tight in the pivot. And Riot, again, can't confirm, but Riot in particular always does. So all I did was back this pivot out ever so slowly. I'm talking like literally an almost imperceptible amount, maybe like a 30 seconds of a turn. And yeah, it made a big difference because now, yeah, this is so just fall to my nail, easy to close. It's snappier now than it was before. And yeah, look how easily that falls and how easily that goes down. Uh, as far as how that works, this is a 14 and a half degree angle to hitting that detent ball. So that's pretty good. Where this mostly comes into impact is on knives that have flipper tabs because that, you know, that angle is going to mean whether or not it's crushing your finger uh, under your thumb right here. But because this is such an unobtrusive flipper tab, that's really not an issue. It's really easy to have this fall down and not touch. So I find that if you put your thumb in this kind of spot and let it fall to your nail at the flipper tab level, you're already past that detent ball. Conversely, if if you do it, pull your thumb down further and let it fall to your nail, that's super duper easy. You're obviously past the detent ball. And this is such a light blade that it's not going to cut you or mark up your nail that way. And um, because like I said, it's a little bit uh, more smooth, even though it's so light, it's really pretty easy to close. I'm doing this under cameras kind of hard because I just don't have a lot of vertical room I can play with. But I've found that if, you know, if I have this out and I try and close it, it's actually really, really easy to close. Moving to the flipper tab. This is one of the things I was most pleased with. This entire week that I tried it, every single time I use this, it just worked flawlessly. You can fail it if you're intentionally using it wrong. So what I mean here is if you'd use this as a very kind of very push buttony flipper tab, even there, like it didn't get it to happen, but yeah, there. 
you can, if you, if you just push down and don't slide back at all, you can fail it in the sense that this comes around and hits your finger. But that's not how it's intended to be used. So if you just use it the way you would expect, like kind of just grip on this little bit of, of jimping right there, which works so effectively. It's so nice and sharp, but not painful in any way, and just pull back. It's so snappy. So I was very pleased to find just how effectively I could deploy this every single time. It's very, very fun to play with. Now, as far as other parts of carry, I found this um, pocket clip to be just a little bit shallow in this dimension. I, I was able to fit it over all of my pants, and this is such a pretty looking knife that I expect you're gonna wear this more with something like dress slacks than you would with something like really thick work pants. But you do you, you know, however you wanna pair your stuff. I did find that there's, just like there's not a super ton of clearance here, there's not a super ton of clearance here. So, I don't know, it's, it's not that it was hard to get in out of my pocket, it just, if I intentionally was using this with really thick material, pants, it was just it took a little bit more concerted effort than I than it would with some other clips. As far as flipping that clip, this is entirely ambidextrous, this is what will flip over if you're a lefty. The one thing I'll say though is that um, this is true of not just this knife, but literally any Thai knife, uh, the clip is always going to be able to wiggle just a little bit, and that wiggling is going to wear just a very tiny wear mark onto the, the scale. So if you are a lefty and you do plan on flipping this, I would recommend you try and do that instantly. As soon as you get the knife out, just try to minimize any amount of clip mark there is right there, because this is a bead last finish over this beautiful scroll work. And so that, that little tiny wear mark is going to just kind of glow a little bit. I find that it actually gets hidden really well by this uh, detailed pattern here. But again, it, this is not new to this knife. So if you're a lefty and you're used to flipping clips on, on tiny knives, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. As far as using without the clip, this is such a pretty knife and such a kind of just pleasant, like worry stone nugget knife kind of thing. I can definitely see people wanting to use this in some kind of micro slip or sliding this in and out of their fifth pocket without the clip on it. And yeah, you can definitely take this clip off. You will be left with this little tiny indentation at the back. And uh, some people will, that'll bug some people. Some people will be perfectly fine with that. You can put this screw back in if you want to fill the little screw hole that's there. I will say though that the, the length of the screw is expecting this to be there. And so it doesn't actually screw in without the clip there all the way down to make it completely flush. So there will be a very slight gap underneath the screw and that would probably bug some really OCD folks. It didn't bug me. It also didn't bug me having it without the screw, but I'm the type of person that would leave the clip on. So none of this is gonna bug me. I think where I wanna end on with all of this is just like, yeah, my final thoughts after having it for a week I, I'm still just not a dagger shaped blade person. It just doesn't appeal to me. But when I actually tried like holding this for real and just seeing what it would be like to use this, it feels so much better than I expected. I probably won't buy one just because of that, but that is entirely an aesthetic thing. So if this aesthetically appeals to you, yeah, I don't think you should be held back at all from any kind of usability perspective concerns. This is actually super duper usable. Um, the big thing though that I think makes this really something you should consider is if you are shopping for a knife that um, that is going to be versatile in terms of your environment that you use it in a, like a professional setting. I went out of my way to find a, a friend that I know typically gives me a really weird look if I pull out a knife. A very not knife person, knives make them uncomfortable. And I asked them what they thought of this. And not only did they not care that it was a knife, their reaction was, ooh, that's really pretty. <laughs> and so they wanted to actually see it and play it and play with it and look at it. So if you're looking for a knife that's not gonna make people in your office space or in your lunchroom um, uncomfortable, I think this goes so much further than that. I think they're gonna actually think this is really cool looking. And so, yeah, that, that does, especially with it being small, it's super not intimidating and it's kind of cute and it's so pretty and so clearly well done. Like when I handed it to that person and they looked at it, they went, oh wow. Like they were just captivated by the quality of this machining and everything. Yeah. So yeah, if you're looking for a knife that you can use in your office, yeah, I don't think you're going to get much better than this. It will, and again, it's going to work perfectly fine for the types of tasks you would actually use in a, in a kind of more businessy office perspective. So I think that if this um, style appeals to you at all, um, yeah, you should definitely check one of these out. And uh, yeah, man, look how pretty that is. I think it's going to end on. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll, I'll, I'll catch you guys next time. Have a nice day.